Hello everybody and welcome to our YouTube channel. We are as always your hosts Arna and Carlos. And today we are going to do some sewing. We've got our sewing machine, we've got our ironing board, our iron, we've got some of the great fabrics and we are going to be making these little placemats where we will be teaching you how to do these very very nice kind of envelope seams I think you could call these. Uh, so stay tuned uh, and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy this podcast. And this will be like teamwork. Yeah. So we change places a little bit. But you start with the ironing. So before we start sewing, I think we need to get some formalities out of the yes. way. Remember that if you do not want to miss any episode on our channel, the best way is to turn on your notifications. That way you will be notified every time we post a new episode. Usually it's on Sundays at 6 p.m. Central European time, but sometimes we will post on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So by turning on your notifications, you will never miss out. And remember to subscribe. Our family of subscribers is growing all the time and this year we would really love to hit 100,000 subscribers and you can help us with that by hitting that subscribe button. Okay Arne, yeah. formalities out of the way, let's start sewing. Yes. First, what you need to make a placemat, you need some fabric. Fabric. Preferably the Arne and Carlos fabric. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can use any fabric, but we use our collection and you need uh, flisseline and you need uh, a cotton fabric for yeah. the back. It's, like a muslin or something. In English it's called muslin and in, we call it flis, uh, toile, the French, French. the French word. So just a simple cotton. So what we're basically doing is we're using a fabric uh, that is rather thin. And then we are giving it some extra support with the flisseline, a layer of flisseline, and then a layer of muslin on the back. So pretty much these placemats are lined. And now I think you can, you can hear this, right? It's kind of a little thicker and it's got a nice uh, touch to it so that these won't wear out as quickly when you use them as placemats on your dining table. Yeah, and uh, we know that in some countries you can't get our fabrics yet. So if you want to use our fabric, uh, we have uh, made the size of the placemats according to the sizes that you can get when you buy those fat quarters. Mm -hmm. I think it's called fat quarters. Yes. Yeah. Because like in America, you can get the fat quarters. Yes, and so uh, in order to do this, you may want to know the size. We've kind of uh, tried to base it into the American fat quarter. So the measurements in centimeters are, Arne? 44 and 35. So 44 centimeters by 35 centimeters. And in inches, this is going to be 17 and a quarter inch by 13 and three quarters of an inch. No, not of an inch. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So, sorry, inches is not our forte. We are, we are metric here in Norway. Let's try again. So it's 17 and a quarter by 13 and three quarters. That will be the measurement of the, um, of the placemat pattern, uh, which you then are gonna fold in uh, on the sides. Yes. And it's always good to make one in paper first so you can have something to cut from and also it's easier to understand how you make it when you fold the paper first. So I can show how I folded this one. Okay. So we change place. No, no, I can just stand with yeah. you. Okay, so first I, I fold in one centimeter. Which in inches is going to be uh, too complicated so let's just say that you it's gonna to be too complicated so let's just say you figure it out on figure the it internet. Out. So one centimeter first then you fold two centimeters like this and then when you have those two centimeters just make the corners meet like the envelope corner and then when you mark that you open it then you draw a line to mark the line where you're sewing and you mark one centimeter seam allowance and you cut that off and then when you open it, it looks like this. Mm. Very good. So now when you have that, it's actually easier to fold because when you start folding the fabric, you have these marks. Mm. So it's easier in a way. Clever, very clever. So 
So as always... You can do the ironing. Yeah, yeah. As always, when we start <laughs> sewing, there needs to be some ironing done. And today I am the iron responsible. Iron responsible. So I'm just gonna, you know, iron this fabric to give it a nice finish. It's very important. Uh, when sewing, uh, one of the most important tools are is the ironing, the board, ironing board and the iron. You want to get that fabric nice and smooth and you want to get rid of all the creases and just make sure that everything's looking really good. And then of course you need to iron the seams as well. Once you start sewing, you need to open up those seams and iron them down again. Very, very important uh, and you should never ever skip this part of the process ever. This fabric is, uh, I think it's called basket weave in English. It's just uh, two scuffed. Yeah, two. A basket, I think it's called basket weave in English. So it's easy to rip. But if we didn't, if I did this, not in front of the camera, I would have ripped it. Yeah. But then you get, you lose a little bit of the size because it gets hairy. So you can lose like, like uh, I ripped this one, so there's a few millimet millimeters mm. gone in the when you rip it. Yeah. But and you can I'm, get away with it if you do it. Yeah. And I'm just looking at the, you know, the fabric here. It's 100% cotton and it is 140 gra 145 grams per square meter. That's the thickness of this fabric. So it's pretty nice. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I have now... Um, Iron the fabric. Yeah. So then we put on the pattern and we can go, yeah, we can, no, no, we go this way. Go this way. And then you can, you can also iron the pattern so you get this down, this, do the foldings. There's a nice white line on the other side of the fabric. I think I'm going to use that. Mm -hmm to make sure that the direction of the thread is is correct. But as I said, normally I would just make a little... Yeah, I'm definitely... Cut a little bit in the fabric and rip it, but... Yeah, I'm definitely using this be. white line as a marker. Nasty on eels. And we're using the blue from our main collect our, uh, collection. We have three colors in the collection. We have the the blue for the main fabric and we have the white background for the same flowers and then we also have the red this is a very dark red i think is some people call it like scandinavian red because you can almost see houses with this color we like that red are you okay yeah, I'm just putting my pins in. <laughs> and I'm decoration. <laughs> well, I'm sure you can tell them lovely stories while I do this part. Well, I could. But for example, will I? For example, one of the <laughs> questions our viewers will probably be wondering is if we have any dead scissors out today. No, actually we have a new scissor. I think we used it one more time. Yeah, we've already Before. we've already had a premiere. An because we get a lot of feedback on our scissor because they are really bad and we haven't used our scissors for many years. So I can tell it again. This time we found a really good one in Japan. So this one is holy. Yes. This is not, is not allowed to cut any paper with it. And this scissor, we got it in a nice uh, traditional Japanese store that sold uh, amazing knives. And when we got the uh, when we got the knife, they actually um, sharpened it like they did the final finish in front of us. It was amazing to see the the way they did it with a traditional Japanese stone. Mm -hmm. It's really really cool. The scissor wasn't finished in front of us, but uh, it is deadly sharp. So no more dead scissors <laughs> now. And we keep it like with this paper. It came with the paper. Yeah. So when we're not using it, we put the paper back on the scissor. Then the plastic bag. Okay. And we keep it in the box. So Arne, would you like to do the honors and uh, cut? I'm not cut. allowed near the scissor because I tend to uh, ruin them. So. This is the good scissor. Yeah. Okay. Let's see you go. 
I feel like this is like being very proper. How do you say that? Proper. Like I'm following the rules now? Yeah, well, <laughs> we're doing a tutorial. We have to follow the rules, don't we? I'm not ripping the fabric. The fabric up, yeah. Oh, I hit the paper. Whoops. So. But you know what they say, sewing is about, if you, if you know how to cheat, you know how to sew. Now, there's a lot of cheating in sewing. Yeah, which is good for those of you uh, who might, you know, make a little something wrong. You can just pull a little bit on the fabric and it should be fine. As long as you're following the basic principles of sewing, it should be okay to do a little bit of cheating. Not much, but a little bit. A little bit. Okay, so that was the, that was cutting the, um, the initial square. Or rectangle, sorry. Yeah, that scissor is uh, as sharp it's as really can good. be. So you can almost do this. Yeah. I think I need a little. Yeah, I can do it. Beautiful. Then if we cut out some of this, maybe we make it a little bit easier for ourselves later. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, this is going great and the scissor is working uh, yeah, it's beautifully. Working. And now when you start folding the seam allowances, you will actually, you will check. So you've got one centimeter and two centimeters. Mm -hmm. Are you dying to know how much that is in inches? <laughs> oh yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't understand that. It's uh, metric in Norway. It has always been metric. And uh, metric is the only way for us in our country. Um, so we don't really have to understand inches as we do everything in metric. So, of course, if you come from a country where you do inches, you have to look this up uh, on Google. It's easier than us trying to figure it out. I guess if you're used to inches, you probably have that same feeling for the size. Yeah, you I can mean, tell an inch by looking at it. Yeah, and, and it's the same with a centimeter. Be the same. I mean. Usually we'll do like a centimeter seam allowance, and I'm sure there's a standard seam allowance in English or in America uh, or, or the UK, which would be used uh, instead of a one centimeter seam allowance, you have your own, right? So. Okay. So that's gonna be our placemat. So mm -hmm. now we have to put on the flisslin and then you just iron the flisslin on. Yeah. Not thinking about the corners, yes. you cut them out later. I'll just cut off. Can I cut off uh, this part later? Or do yeah, I cut? if you turn it the other way on the iron table, then you can do it. Because you don't want to have the glue on your iron. No, no, I know that. But what I'm, quest what I'm asking is, can I just cut a rectangle first and then finish off the cutting uh, after I glue? Yeah. Because that does save a little bit of effort. Take away most of the, this part and this part. This you, you can leave. So you can get it off the iron table later. God, this scissor is just... Amazing. <laughs> it's really sharp. Okay. And you know you have to make how, like 12 of these? This is the first one. Well, yeah, if you're going to have a big dinner party with 12 <laughs> people in it. Uh, but why don't we just do one for you and one for me for breakfast, you know, for well, the breakfast table. We're usually alone here. I have one already. So. Yeah, that's what I mean. So you've got yours and now I'm getting mine. And then we'll get someone else to do the rest. <laughs> we have people for this. <laughs> no. no, we don't. <laughs> okay. There we go. 
Yes, that is done. And then I suppose I can just, uh, can just iron it. Down. Iron it, and it's very important uh, that when you're ironing the flisseline onto the uh, fabric, make sure not to have any steam on your iron, because then it won't set. And make sure that the glue side is down so that you don't <laughs> yeah. burn your iron. And also that you put the flisseline on the back of the fabric, not on the front. That yeah. could be really bad. Well, I hope we did it right. <laughs> but when I was a teacher in the fashion school, I remember like so we had accidents where students just put the iron on the flisseline and it was stuck to the iron. It smelled a lot. So oh, it happens. It happens. It can happen to anyone. Yeah, I'm sure it could happen to me. Yeah. And me. But this seems to be uh, stuck now, so that's really great. Yep. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and cut the, the uh, excess it flisseline. Stuck. It's not stuck there? No, it's loose. It's loose. Let's just... Okay, let me just start by cutting the excess uh, flisseline on the other side. And then I'm going to give it a quick iron Still a again. a little bit loose on the side. Yeah. Why is that? Give it a quick iron afterwards and it will be fine. Don't worry. Okay. Cut. Cut. It's strange just to look because yeah. I normally don't look. I do other things. Yeah, but sometimes you just have to be, you know, patient. Patience is a virtue. Okay. And you just have to be <laughs> patient. So. I'm going to give it a good iron on both sides now, and then it will probably, you know. And one more. I love the scissor. It's relaxing to look at you. Yeah. So I'm going to give it up. <laughs> getting attached now. Mm -hmm. But then I can do the, the folding of the seam allowance. Yeah, and then you can then add you the... you can watch me. Yeah, do you want me to cut some uh, muslin as well for you? Or... You know, the muslin we just rip. Okay, so because then I'm gonna let Arne rip. Because the edges are going under the hem that you make. Yeah, so you will have the big honor of ripping the muslin. Let me just see one more time. Yes, this looks perfect now. If you don't put on the flisley and the fabric is a little bit too thin, I think. So it's it's nicer to have the flisley. I take away this white. No, this is from the fabric. It's from the fabric. Okay. But it's going to be folded anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So what we do now is we fold in the one centimeter. And now when you have these you have the corners, it's actually easier. I can hold it here. Mm -hmm. But then you will you need to check also that you're actually having one centimeter. Don't worry, I've got it. Yeah. I've got it. But normally it should work. Yeah, it's a centimeter. Yeah. So you can iron. You see, normally you wouldn't be two people to do <laughs> no. this, but you know, I need to have a little part in this episode as well. So I'm just. Uh, and you're doing so good. Yeah, the the official iron boy. That's nice. And then one centimeter on this side. This piece of the flisseline comes out there, so we have to be careful. So we. Yep. I think this one needs. Let me have, have this one. Oh, I'm it unemployed now. Didn't stuck. Maybe we can uh, do a little fast forward. Fast forward here, because you don't have to see. You don't actually have to see everything. Okay. 
Yep. So there you have the first, the first one centimeter, and now you're folding two centimeters. Then it should be something like that. Mm -hmm. This we have to check. So you have to have like double fabric when you fold it, because you're hiding the seam allowance under the two centimeter. And then you're going to teach everybody how to do the cute little envelope uh, yeah. envelope scenes, which I'm very excited for, because mm -hmm. they are very pretty when you do them that way. Yeah. Don't you agree? It's a nice finish. Very nice finish. How about washing these in the washing machine? I mean, will the... I well, mean, I know this, but I'm just asking for the sake of the viewers. What happens when you put the, uh, the fabric, the placemat in the washing machine? Will the flisselin... Uh, make any any problems or will it just stay no i don't think so no because but it will shrink a little won't it when you wash it in the machine. well we haven't tried I, I would think that when you put this in the washing machine there will be a little bit of of shrinkage but that will be the same for all if you do all the placemats in the same size and then put them in the washing machine they should all pretty much shrink the same right it will be maybe a percentage of the fabric maybe a couple of per two percent or something but that's inevitable when you're working with uh, cotton and things like that. Probably wash it by hand. No, I mean, come on. <laughs> if you're going to eat and spill your food on it, you could wash it in the washing machine. Yeah. And there is some tolerance there in case it shrinks. Mm -hmm. So now when you have these folded like this, what you're going to do is you're going to sew like these corners like this. So then you have to go and turn this one the other side. Like this. And now you have these, you have these angles. Mm -hmm. So it should be Very easy cool. to sew it down. So you place these nicely towards each other and then you sew at one centimeter. If you missed a little bit now when you did the first ironing, you can always twerk, fix it. What do you call that? Twerk it? No. Hmm? You tweak, tweak, twink, it? Tweak, tweak it? Tweak? You can tweak it a little bit, <laughs> stretch it, or do a little tweak to get the right measurement. So you, if, if it's like not exactly the measurements you should have when you folded it the first time, you have something to start with. So that's the first corner, then you do the same, you put this together like this. The one centimeter should point down or invert in. Because that's the part that's going under the two centimeter. And again, one centimeter. So if you are making 12 of these, it takes time, but of course, if you just do it and don't explain things, it's quicker. So if you do this at home, it's probably much quicker. It's nice with the flistly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Feels it gives, more it, a, like, it, gives um, it some structure that yeah. is really nice.
Then when you finish this, you cut a little bit of the corner mm -hmm. like this. And you do that because? Because you have to iron the seam allowance open. So it's easier to open it. So you have to remove some of this. Okay, so it And this won't be destroyed me. anyway because this is going inside. So now you're open, open iron this open and you fold it out. Yeah. Oh, and you get those gorgeous little envelope things, huh? Pretty, pretty cool, huh? Okay, so. I can do the 12 while you do that. So I'm going to open it and then I just put it, Maybe try to put it as flat there. as possible and just open it that way on one side. Whoops, it's giving me a little. On the other side. Open. Open. You can use the scissor to make a nice corner, but be careful not to pull the scissor through the corner. I'm just going to open them for now and then I'll see what I need to do with the scissor after. It's easier. There you go. Number two is open. It's nice to look at other people work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hard work. Yeah. Okay, open, 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 and open. No, I will do the next thing. Can I do the next thing? Can I do something now? Okay. So. so now we're going back, folding yeah, this and one. And then pull the scissor through. I mean, I could have done that. Well, it's not like, rocket science. I feel like doing it because I was bored. Yeah, but I'm still ironing, okay? Okay. So, let's see if the corner was sharp enough. If that should be a problem, you can always go back and take it in a little bit. It seems like there should be a little bit sharper. should iron this down mm -hmm. again. It seems like this should be a straighter. Then I can measure this while you do that. And this uh, twelve or muslin or the cotton fabric should just go under the edges. Okay, so now we have to place the cotton inside and under. So I ripped the width, so now I need the length. So that's pretty just so it pretty goes straightforward. Under. Yeah. And since it's woven this way, I really don't spend time cutting it. No. I rip it. I hope nobody's shocked now, but that's how we do it sometimes. <laughs> You know, if you're shocked, you should put yourself down on the floor and the feet up. That yeah, helps. And I, I heard it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you go to a sewing <laughs> store and you ask for a meter of something, they'll just cut a little and then rip it up. I mean, as long as it's going in the thread direction, it's fine. Uh, you just took my job away. I was unemployed again. Yeah. But I'm back. You're back. Okay, now let, this is my job. Move that away. Mm -hmm. So we put this in like this. Ta da! And it's, you 
this has it's just a little bit smaller than the main yeah. piece. And now you're going to stitch on top. No, I'm going to put, how do you call Pin it down. Pin it down and then uh, stitch on top. Yes. I think I'm going to let you pin it down. It's... And then I stitch from the back, of course, because then you see the line where you're going to mm. sew. Yeah, I'm always going to the store and looking for placemats. I like to put placemats on my table, but yeah, if you've got some great fabric, it's easy to make, as you can see. And yeah, I said I was only going to make two, but I think that after seeing you do this, I might want to do more than two. And it's quicker, like, if you just do it and they look the same on the yeah. If you just do it, like, it's... Take more time when there's two making one. <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could kind of cut and cut and cut and cut. So you could do, prepare many and then just sew them on later on. So it would be pretty quick once you've cut them all. That's very nice. And as I said, if the corners are a little bit standing up a little bit, you just go in again and you make it, make a new line. So you get those corners flat. Or as flat as you can, where the envelope corner is. Mm. So now it's like this, mm -hmm. and like this. Very good. So it's time to sew it. Hmm? I'm just talking to the camera, I'm telling everybody that it's going to start sewing. <laughs> Can I have the box for the needles? Yeah, that's a good question. Where is the box for the needles? I have needles in my hand. But... I heard something. Oh, there it is. But... So we'll put that here for you. There you go. No, not on that side. Well, okay. I just gave it to you. <laughs> and then you sew as close to the edge as you like, or as you think you can. If you want bigger placemats, you need to get fabric where you can buy from the roll, not the fat quarter. Oop, you're going to run out of thread. Of course you are. <laughs> That's never a problem. Hmm? That's not a problem. No, 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 but it's a classic, isn't it? <laughs> and then you're going to finish it off and, whoops, run out of thread. Okie dokie. And you can do the final touch. The final touch. So, we put our measurements on the blog and explain how, what we do, and then you have the video, and then you can make placemats. Yeah. Super easy, super fun to make, and uh, make sure to make those really cool envelope corners, as they do give it a beautiful finish on the inside as well or on the back side. So final touches, I'm just gonna iron this beautiful <coughs> fabric. And if you're wondering where you can get the fabric, uh, go check our blog. We're doing a post on this, uh, on this episode and we will have information for you about exactly where you can buy the Arne and Carlos fabric that we designed, uh, that we are calling the Nordic Garden Dream. And this is the main fabric in blue. And I love it because I got the little butterfly there. Huh? Mm -hmm. Where's the other placemat? The other one is, the one, this, the one is But this here? is bigger because this is, this is made Oh yeah, from, this is made for another... For another uh, from... Uh, we had like rolls of the fabric. Yes. But if you don't have a, like the whole piece, only the fat quarters, it has to be smaller. Yeah, so small and large. 
Yeah. So uh, we'll put these measurements for the large one as well on our blog, and then you can kind of choose which one you want to do, depending on whether you buy a fat yep. quarter or if you have a whole roll of fabric. I mean, I'd get a roll in every color if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so do we. And yeah. if there's any like, if there's any other videos like you want to see other stuff we do, please let us know. You like, mean like, uh, do you mean like if they would like to see like, other uh, projects in sewing? Yeah, we can do placemats. Uh, no, we don't placemats. We can do uh, things well, for your knitting needles. Well, you tell us, what would you, like, what would you like to see from us in terms of sewing patterns? We're going to be doing a few of those throughout the year since we already have our own our own fabric. We, I think we should definitely have patterns to go along with that. You know, I mean, should we do shirts? Should we do project bags? Should we do needle cases? I mean, the dresses, dresses. Let us know what you want to see. That take time. That will be a long video. That will be a long video. But yeah, tell us what you want to see <laughs> uh, in the comments fields below and we will, you know, take it into consideration. So Arne, I think we've come to, to, the, end. to the end of this episode. So uh, thank you so much uh, for watching. Remember that the best way to stay in touch with us is by going to arnacarlos.com and uh, popping your email address on our uh, mailing list, for our mailing list. So do that and uh, we'll be back with the next episode in a week's time because we post every Sunday at 6 p.m. Central European time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>